Prologue. The problem with being a protagonist isn't so much the external dangers that threaten you. When you put yourself out there, you anticipate them. The monsters, the enemies, the risk. What you don't see coming are the dangers that feed on your insides, the threats you create for yourself. Those, I've learned, are far more treacherous. For while the former can be vanquished with swords and spears, quick thinking and cunning, and training and physical strength, internal threats are not so easily destroyed. Moreover, they are born when you least expect them and grow like weeds, taking you over from deep within. So much so that by the time you notice what's happening, it might be too late to resurrect yourself from their grip. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Then again, isn't that how all great adventures start? I still remember that day in the infirmary like it was yesterday, though it was actually several weeks ago when everything changed and this whole journey began. The students from my school, Lady Agnew's School for Princesses and Other Female Protagonists, were on a field trip with the students from Lord Channing's School for Princes and Other Young Heroes. We were visiting Adelaide, one of the two kingdoms by the sea in our enchanted fairy tale realm of book, to learn about diplomacy. Though for me, the formal lectures given that week were buried beneath a far more important lesson, which was that your whole world can flip in an instant. And when it does, you have two choices. Take what the universe gives you lying down, or do something about it. Despite the fact that I was literally lying down in a cot at the time of the incident, I'd chosen the latter. No easy task, considering where I come from. I live in a world where people are selected to either be common characters, commons, or protagonists. If you are a common, you are not expected to be anything special. You are supposed to live an ordinary life and help make up the ensemble that highlights those of us chosen to be something extraordinary. This might seem like the short end of the stick in terms of our realm's division, but being a protagonist has its own set of catches. As the rebellious daughter of Cinderella, I know the cost better than most. Depending on what type of protagonist you happen to be, princess, hero, etc., you're expected to live up to the very specific standard that goes along with it. That's why my kind attends the aforementioned private boarding schools. The institutions keep us in our place, streamlining us through curriculums designed to eliminate any personality traits that might deviate from what our realm's leaders consider appropriate main character behavior. If I were to provide my humble opinion on the subject in as succinct a way as possible, I would offer but two words. It blows. Some people, like my best friend SJ, were great at accepting their roles. She was the spitting image of her mother Snow White in nearly every way. And while I knew deep down she wasn't keen on the forced archetypes either, at least her princessness came naturally to her. For me, being everyone else's idea of a perfect princess came as naturally to me as vegetarianism came to the big bad wolf. Part of me was glad for this. I didn't want to be another glittering doll like the rest of my kind, shiny, fragile, useless. I was proud to be the bold, headstrong creature I'd grown into over the last 16 years. I yearned to challenge the damsel in distress stereotype and become something more than a typical good princess, something better. And I figured my defiant personality was the best chance I had of getting there. Alas, three main problems stood in my way. First, I wasn't even a good princess to start with. Since the very beginning, I pretty much sucked in that department. While I excelled at things like combat and snarky comments, I lacked skills my archetype deemed important, like curtsying, singing, and keeping my mouth shut. I'd spent the last few years struggling through most of my classes at Lady Agnew's, from damsels in distress to woodland creature fashions, and it had become evident to pretty much everyone that I was not up to par. As a result, I'd long been forced to wonder, if everyone just saw me as a screw-up, then what chance did I have of defining who I was in a favorable light? 